On this week's episode, the guys discuss the trending topic and the controversy surrounding Joe Rogan and the use of the N-word, as well as a FedEx worker who was chased down and shot at for delivering packages by a father and son duo, which has the similarity of the Ahmad Arbery case. And we also discuss the shocking reveal of death of the comedian and actor Bob Saget. This and much more on this week's episode. morning happy monday 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 i know what you guys are thinking that voice sounds very familiar yes (laughs) yes. we have a special guest in the studio today (laughs) how special (laughs) am i alive (laughs) the ray is back just kidding ray is back back. he's back yes i'm back i mean after that last podcast i listened to it and i was like what this guy who's who's dead Wait, you're talking about me. We brought out some coffee for you, man. Um, you know, we're trying to give up on the liquor this year, you know, so. So why is it you guys don't want to support me? What do you mean? We do support you. <sighs> Listen, so I, sent, distance. so I I sent out an invite. Listen, I'm coaching soccer right now, right? Soccer is not my sport. It's not, not my sport. Not mine either, but. But, you know, <laughs> my, you know Andrew, my son, Andrew, let me, shout out to Andrew. He wanted to play soccer. So, um, okay, first and foremost, dad, you dad. never mentioned that. I thought you were coaching stranger kids. Why would I coach stranger kids? That's what I asked. Which is why we wasn't <laughs> that's coming what, out. That's <laughs> what I was wondering. Like, this is hey, some so look, weird stuff. So, look, I'm coaching. Ray Ray, Ray okay. is the assistant coach, and we're coaching these kids from 11 to 14. All right, so it's a family affair. Okay. So, and the reason never I started coaching that. was because Andrew wanted to play with his friends. So, I went into it not to really even really win, but so Andrew can play with his friends. But I ended up picking a team that's really, really good. And right now we are 7 0 oh, and 1. And when I, the, the one is a tie because we just played an undefeated team uh, yeah. last, uh, last night. Okay. And they're undefeated. We're undefeated. And the score was 0 0. Okay. Very intense game. Okay. And they were supposed to beat us, they were. But um, it's not going to happen like that. All right. Okay. Wow. Wow. I don't like to say anything about it. So for the record. So what about the? um, You good though? Because I'm good. Hey, I was. I I I want to let you know that there was nothing but support here for (laughs) you. Absolutely. Nothing here but support until Reg (laughs) stated (laughs) the obvious, which was clearly not so obvious to me. Which is why there are two strange brown men hanging out here that we've never seen before, and why do they seem to be rooting for the coach? But not not only not only that, but check it out. Exactly. Hey, did you ask Reg where the park is at? No, I don't know where the park's at. Two minutes away. It didn't matter. Two, Pred- hey, the park is two minutes away. I, I can show you my Reggie, my Reggie phone that shows the up park. the predator tracker, and there's there's predators two minutes, five minutes away. What are you talking about? You I don't want to be on that list. Did you not meet? Did you not meet? <laughs> I don't, bro, you never mentioned any of these details. Did you see any of these no, details? I, just come. So I assumed that right? he was doing it for you know his charity kid or oh. for someone important. Um, but I, I, the the details that we're receiving now weren't really expressed in the communication back and forth. But why no. would why would the idea of pedophile come in there? What what? Well, what do you it mean? Wasn't, we, it, it, it it didn't start that. Rather, right. when I go to Walmart, the first thing I think is, hey, make sure they don't think I'm a shoplifter, just because <laughs> the eyes are going to be on me. He's right. I'm you know facts, bro. Brown, man. Come I go on. to the gas station. I got to make sure. Hey, when I'm going in, I'm going to make sure they see my hands. Look, if I come in there with a drink, like I got to show the camera. I came in with this drink first. So, so this is why we need uh, what uh, PTP back, because you know, as black men, we need to support each other. Agreed. I support you, but I shot at you like six I, I, times. I felt like the show. I felt like it was because like there was like some inner feelings about 
coming around kids and that's weird. No, no, it was no, weird. No, that's no, weird. No, go no, back, no, hey, Raymond. That's really love, weird. We love <laughs> go back. Kids. Go back and record. We, the, we, listen to the podcast. We love the kids. What made hey, it strange? Thank you. We please were coming out. To support you, because we didn't know the, any any. I didn't the know children. your kid exactly. It was just weird. You were like, we "Hey, didn't know any of the children?" Now, if we had known, okay, that you know what your son was could you have asked that team? question? Hey, is it? Are you just coaching by yourself? Are you coaching your kids? No, 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 no. Thank you me. said, "Check this out. You can't leave like breadcrumbs and set us up for a booby trap." <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up, so you say, "Hey, I'm coaching my kid." That's what I would be like. Hey, I'm coaching my girls. Hey, you know, come watch this game. That's what I would. Oh, so for sure, I'm gonna support you. If you're like, "Hey, I'm a coach now. I'm Bill Belichick," and I'm like, "Okay, that's cool," but who you coaching? In my mind, I'm thinking, "Oh, this dude's just coaching some kids." I I never thought about it. That's I'm what like, it was. Yo, we got to come out and support Ray, and then we had the show, and Reg mentioned it. And I'm like, you know, now that he says that, that you're in is sub- kind of strange. When you're in <laughs> suburbia, you think suburbia. Right? Gotcha. You're like, hey, okay. you know what, like. Which well, one is your kid? And, and this is his neck of the woods. It ain't mine, right? So <laughs> like, if uh, he's dropping knowledge, I'm going to take it. It's the whole concept. If you see <laughs> people running, you ain't asking questions. You running too. So. When in Rome, <laughs> do what the Romans do. But you process. have to know I will never put you guys in a situation where it would be uncomfortable. Oh, agree. Well, I don't know, Ray. You were winning. I, I did it. I did. <laughs> winning can change people's <laughs> mind, bro. You know what I mean? Look at Bill Belichick. Yo, they were playing with deflated balls, bro. And they knew the other schemes and plays of the other the teams bro winning not, changes people not for a moment did i believe there was any malice there not for a <laughs> single moment again as we as we started breaking down the situation reg painted a picture and i'm like you know what broski i think you're onto something there <laughs> all right to wrap to wrap this up so i am coaching my son okay i got Aunt, i got raymond helping me coach nice this friday is a game at 6 45 you guys are invited i know jeff you live in longwood so it's yeah. kind of far but at six forty five, you're invited. You don't have to come if you don't want. You know, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> but we're playing the same team we played Wednesday. Okay. It'll be tied zero zero. The under the other undefeated team. That's correct. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal then. So this is the game before the playoffs to kind of okay. get our seating. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh-huh. All right. Last game of the season. So just out of curiosity. Well, I thought you said next week you have happens, the playoffs, right? It is. What happens if you play the team again, you guys draw again? How do you figure out the seeding? Does it then go based off of the amount of goals scored per each team or something like that? So what's the question again? So right now, that team that you played, you guys are both undefeated. Right. With, with, you have the same record. So if exactly. you play again yes. and you draw again, how is the seeding figured out as far as the playoffs? Do, will it then go to, you know, I guess the amount of goals scored by each team or something I, like I, that? I think so because okay. when I look at the standings, they're ahead of us. They usually score a lot more points than we do. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, I'm glad we got that cleared up, and everyone um, feels a lot better. I'm, and I'm glad to. I hope Ray, you guys can hear the sarcasm. Hey, in, no, I'm just Ray glad Ray. it's all cleared up. I and, feel a lot better now because when I listened to that podcast, I was like, <laughs> "You put the? us in a predicament, bro." We, what, 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 hey, Ray, look, you put us in a, a situation. Like, and I don't want to be in no situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to look. I love the kids, but I don't love the kids like that, man. I don't even love my own kids right now. <laughs> you know, I kind of like them. So you want me to come home and watch some strangers? Like what? Like I got things to do, Lilla. I got, I got to clean up stuff. I got. So I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like the reason I wanted you guys really to come with some support and also maybe some content. Okay. Well, um, it goes back into that petty thing. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of content are we gonna have about kids? But um, see, you just I, make so it here's weird. The thing. Here's the thing. So you've painted a different picture for me now, and so yeah, it's it's a it's it's a little short notice to try and come back up here tomorrow because yeah, I think yeah. I got something on the docket. But if I don't and I can get out of it, I will come out and support. Thank I you. I, I appreciate that. I will. Yes. Thank well, you so and, much. And there's always next week. <laughs> The seated playoff <laughs> spot. There's always next week, and that to me, that's better content. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Um, but are we good though? Are we, are we, I, you know, I feel like um, all, all the the energy I had about that, all the just the, I'm good now. I had let it all. Think out. so? Okay, no, I'm good. Okay, cool. I use it for Friday as energy. You there know? you go. Ooh, you okay. Go. I don't even know how a coach find is supposed bullet, to. Bullets and board material. There you go. Okay, you say you're gonna use it for Friday. Just don't yeah. beat them kids, man. <laughs> don't worry. Yo, Jeff and uh, Rich. Uh, I don't want none of that. 
So, um, <laughs> real quick, congrats, by the way, man, to come into this, you know, to for the, the sake of helping out your son and allowing him to play with his friends. And then not only that, but to like secure a solid team and be undefeated for your first role at this man props. Like that's a big deal on multiple levels. Like I'm as still, a father, as a coach, I'm still like shocked new to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I'm props st- to you, bro. I'm still shocked that yeah. we even, I, I no idea to be honest. That's okay. I thought we would be probably maybe win one game. Nah, yeah. that's okay. Until they started playing. And then to go up against, you know, what is considered the best team. Oh, they're and, they and, are good. And not lose, right? I like, know. you know, people may argue, like, well, you didn't win, but you know, we didn't lose either. So that's correct. That's solid. No, right, I mean, now. yeah, what did you, what did you, um, have you, has it been hard teaching that age range or what? Because everyone thinks they know things these, these days. Kids are harder to teach these days, I think, than I, it was. Honestly, I'm not really teaching anything because I don't know anything about soccer. No, okay. but you got to teach, uh, it's, it's, um, no, you still can coach. You still teach when you're coaching. I, I actually use fundamentals. You Google it. You teach them fundamentals. They, it's what what I'm trying to say is: Do they follow your your instructions? Is it hard? Or they're hard headed kids a, or I, whatnot? I have, a, I have a wonderful team. They all listen. They all follow instructions. Um, I maybe have only two players who may complain about their positions I put them in. Yeah, but for which the, is normal. Yeah, which is normal. But for the most part. Mm-hmm. It's an excellent team. I have excellent players. They love to play. I got one kid every game. He says, "Thank you, coach." Every oh, that's game. awesome. Yeah, you know what, Raymond? Now, you're is that gonna... your son? No, it's not my son. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I do. I would say, Raymond, clown, you're right? gonna you're gonna be a great politician. <laughs> he must he must have told these parents like listen to this podcast because I'm like, there's got to be one kid that sucks. It's got to be one kid that talks back and and tells you to eat shit every game. Eat shit, eat shit, coach. See, but that you can't is, get rid of. This is what makes him a great coach because he's representing even off yeah. the field. That's well, one one kid told him. me, one kid, I put him in defense. He said, "Coach, only play striker." And I said, yeah. "What?" Coach, I only play striker. What does that mean? I said, listen, I, I'm going to put you what's best for the team. But I will put you in striker, but might not even when you want to, but I'll put you up there. How did that, how that go? Is he, did he say you were right, coach? Like, it is just, he excelled he, at the position you put him in? Yes. Yes. And he, and he hasn't acknowledged like you were right, not at all, nothing like yeah, that. But no, the, because he, but because the he, strike is the role, though. Uh, yes, the striker, yeah, the striker, yeah, that's 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 the scoring spot. points. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah oh, scoring, scoring so points. The striker is where it's at. The highlight reel, yeah. got yeah. you. Yeah. It's like, um, do you want to be Rudy Gobert, or do you rather rather be Donovan Mitchell? Ooh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's or like Donovan that. Mitchell. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's a good analogy. So. I'm glad we're good though, um, Ray. And I think you're good. There you go. Got it off. Had, had got, got it off his back. Got Usa. Usa. back. Yes. Usa. This is a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> I will, uh, hey. Yo, you know, <laughs> speaking of safe spaces, um, uh, I know we talked about that. I sent you guys that article or the, the YouTube video too about the the FedEx worker, uh, the FedEx black worker that was uh, chased down and attacked by. Um, a father and son duo, almost yep. mirroring the Ahmadri, um, Ahmad Aubrey attack. But only thing he was on wheels, and he was working for um, FedEx. This feels way more flagrant. Uh, yeah, so it just yeah, yeah. I, I it's so crazy uh, that this is still happening like that. Yeah, but uh, it, before we get into it, yeah, so uh, if you guys. Uh, hear about it it was a driver 24 year old uh demontario gibson of utica mississippi all right so uh he, he had an interview uh after he complained about the incident that happened so he was delivering a package to an address and once the details come out i've seen this you guys have seen it that fedex ups even amazon they don't have all their trucks are not marked. They have these budget vehicles, Hertz, uh, Hertz, U-Haul, mm-hmm. uh, anything that's available at the time. And he's wearing uh, a FedEx outfit, you know, uniform, right? He was with FedEx, right? I'm not. You're, you're correct. FedEx. Okay, FedEx. Okay, so he's leaving a driveway, and then this other car is coming um, on on side traffic, coming into the driveway, or, or trying to stir him off the road. He's trying to figure out what's happening, and um, 
his instincts kick in and he's like, no, I'm going to swerve, you know, swerve around him. And then he sees a, 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 another gentleman in the street, in the, road. in the road with a gun, a rifle or and, a shotgun, one and, of the, and, and trying to tell him to stop at the right. same I tell him to stop at the same time. Mm-hmm. And which he, in, in, in return says a smart thing, ducks down behind the wheel and turns the car and heads out of the, uh, the development. And which this other truck comes and, and, and they're now they're pursuing him, chasing him. He they chase him for but didn't two he to shoot? three. He, he gets he oh yeah, shot, shot after when he, he turned. Yes, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes. To, to miss the guy, the guy you're shot right. at him. Mm-hmm. Yes. The guy did shoot at him uh when he was uh swerved to miss him and it went in back of the um, the Hertz or the budget vehicle. Right. Went into a few packages that they figured out afterwards. Yep. They chased him for like 10, 15 minutes. I know. And here's the thing. I don't, for the, for the love of God, I don't know why this, this guy thought to call his supervisor and not the police. 911. I, I, it was the weirdest thing. Like, hey, these guys are chasing me. They shot at me. What is your supervisor going to do? And the supervisor, I mean, he's like, they're shooting at you? He's like, yes. He says, okay. And the supervisor says, this is verbatim in the, the, in, in the, um, in the interview. He's like, the supervisor apparently said, okay, head back to the, sta- <laughs> the station as soon as you can. Oh my gosh! Okay, okay, coach. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so he was like, "Well, he thought about it, and he was like, you can file a report.' This is what the supervisor said: "You can file a report in the morning." Are you fucking kidding me? Excuse my language. Um, this shit just this just has so much red flags. First and foremost, you're as an employer, you're supposed to protect your employee. Um. You don't say, "Hey, we're going to file this incident." That's not an incident report. That is um, a, 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 a crime, crime happening <laughs> on real life time. Uh, and then, so what happens? He's like, "Forget this." He finally gets thinks about it, and he's like, "I'm going to call the police." So, uh, De Montero calls the police, uh-huh. and he's speaking to the dip- dispatcher, and he's like, "Wait, hold on. You, you're saying..." You're in the Hertz vehicle or whatever, and, and these guys are chasing you. And he's like, I just got off the phone. <laughs> or we just got a phone call about you, and you're in a suspicious vehicle. Or you look suspicious. So here's the thing. Um, I didn't understand it. I, you know, I could, uh, So I'm going to look at it from different perspectives, okay? I'm not going to be hero man like someone stole, you know, Amazon, UPS, if anything's insured. Um, and let's, you got a care package coming from your mama. Um, it's replaceable. I'm not going to sit there and chase down, uh, anyone in hurts anything in a budget vehicle. Cause I don't know who's in the back of that budget vehicle. Forget chase down. I am not standing in the street in exactly. the way of an oncoming vehicle Dude. to try and make some citizens arrest because yes. you potentially took something off Z- of somebody's porch. Exactly. In a, in a hurts vehicle. And okay, like I said, um, and he's got the uniform on, so I can understand what the misconception would be. Like, okay, this is someone trying to play their, you know, FedEx or something. Okay, but why are you chasing down this person? Why are you, why are you shooting, shooting at, at this person? Why are you shooting at someone? That's already a crime. You yeah. stood in the way of the vehicle, exactly. So to to that's to, entrapment to, to cry. You yeah. know what? I was defending myself. Yep, is absolute nonsense. Yep. It, I mean, I know we. Think back to Amar Arbery, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think back to Trayvon Martin, how, Mm -hmm. like, people are trying to take the law into their own hands and thinking that they're trying to, like, make these citizens arrest or stop the evil guy, allegedly evil person or the bad guy. But that's that's just cover. That situation still pisses me off because the police (laughs) told him to stand down. Exactly. And he said, yeah. They told him to stand down and he took it upon himself. Are you still following him, sir? (sighs) Yeah. Well, we don't need you to do that. (sighs) But he's going to get away. They always get away. Yeah. Yeah. I remember remember that recording. I remember that. Mm. But, yeah, it's just crazy how people still do this nowadays. Like, people still... Think it's okay to do this? Yeah, but here's the part. He also said he felt like uh, he felt kind of uh, disrespected and hurt when he act when he when he dealt with the police because the police sat there and were like, "Well, um, did you do anything that was suspicion that would give him that?" So you're already taking the side of 
the 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 um, Un- unlawful people, the unlawful people, the people that mm-hmm. committed the crime or or have uh, been um, accused of the crime. But how many First, times have we seen that as well? No, absolutely, absolutely. But the fact that you're employed, like this, is, should give him the, the upper hand. He's the victim employed is further by, victimized. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The victim is further victimized, and he's got more. He's got more credibility because he's employed with right. this company That's and right. they deliver. You shouldn't even, so the even moment you say, there. who are you? Why are you here? Absolutely. I work for FedEx. Exactly. Here's my FedEx credit. Exactly. And I Here's call my super- the truck with all the FedEx stuff in the back. There's the bullets. There's the bullets. There's the, you know, and I got a witness. Look, the, my supervisor that told me to report this in the morning. There's bullets. There's <laughs> right. bullets in people's packages. Uh, there's evidence. There's, there's, there, they even have my, shells. My car is the- still smoking right now from the bullets. Exactly. <laughs> Were you doing anything suspicious? Exactly. Is my what, job suspicious? Are you doing things suspicious that would egg them on to do this? Oh, so it's going to make it my fault. And um, uh, another thing, so he didn't get the name of the officer. This is him telling the interview. He he, sa- he stated that, um, you know, he felt disrespected. And then who takes the guy? Okay, wait, let me let me backtrack. His super- <laughs> so his employer tells the kid, the 24, I'll say kid because he's young to us, right? Uh, tells the kid, um, or the man, excuse me, let, let me not do that. He's a, He's a man. Uh, to go back in the same route to the next very next yes. day. Yes, yes. Are you kidding me? He's just been and accosted. Again, He's been the victim is first. Yeah. Victim. Well, it's okay. You can. Oh, and then they finally realized. Okay. Well, we'll try to get you another route. But he's on. He's he's not being paid. Yes. And uh, and and this is what I was going to come back to when I. The reason I mentioned that is because the cop had him go with him to look for the shells. As if he's Are like a, you as if he's an investigator to look for the shells, yes. the shellings, the, the <laughs> cases. Are you kidding me? They put him to work. Where did the Several taxes being paid for? Be yes, exactly. Like they got a lawsuit. For oh, sure. they got oh, several absolutely. lawsuits. You yeah, got absolutely. you. You got Fed. He's got FedEx you lawsuit. Got FedEx. He's got coming after you that homeowner. The city. Yeah, the city, the the county, whatever, um, whatever agency took 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 place took in that investigation. Yeah. yeah. But he, here's my thing. Um, when is it safe uh, to to do the right thing? To like, do your job? To do your job. You can't even be safe in your own workplace now. Like, this is not a first incident. This is an escalated incident because I've seen this before countless times where you watch Karens are stopping people that are in these uh, yeah FedEx trucks um, or UPS trucks. There's one one that are in UPS trucks, and they stop and say, "Why are you in my driveway? Why are you do- while well, I'm delivering your package? Don't do- don't no. You were speeding. You were doing this, and it's I don't know, man. I don't know if the COVID made people's um, uh, bigot come out or racist more come out or or just one want to have more. Uh, What's that? If you don't have control of your life, you want to basically control other people's lives and and be an authoritative figure when you don't really have it going on at home. I don't know, but this is what's been taking a place. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> I can personally tell you a story that's very similar to this story. Absolutely, go for it. Very pers- I mean, very similar. Uh, you, I work in the pool industry, and um, one of my guys he couldn't go take a look at the pool. So I had to go take a look at it myself, and um, I noticed that they had cameras around the house. So um, I went to the front door, made sure I was in front of the camera. I made sure my vehicle was in uh, camera view. Okay. Right? Logo on the truck. I'm wearing a uniform. I go introduce myself. I tell them why I'm there, and I say, uh, I need to take a look at your pool. The homeowner, which is a female, uh, happens to be white. Says, of course, yeah, go to the right of the house. I said, unfortunately, your gate is locked. Do you mind unlocking your gate? She says, of course. I'm thinking everything's fine. She goes inside the house, goes around, and opens the gate for me. So I'm walking through her gate. We're walking side by side. We're heading to her uh, her patio area, yeah. screening area. All of a sudden, I see fear in her eyes, and she mm. and she runs. What? Runs. She runs. You guys, you're walking side by side, right? We're walking side by side, just talking. <laughs> I mean, just the hell. Just look. She runs to the to the um, screen enclosure, closes it, and says, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to see some ID right now." And I wow. said, 
I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. Uh, my ID is in my trucks. I don't, you know, I don't want to take it to a, a pool area and, and drop it and leave it. So I go back. I'll, I'll put my stuff down real quick. I walk back to the truck. I grab my ID. So I turn around. I'm like, dang, this is weird. Like she closed the door and locked it, right? So I walk back to the truck, grab my ID. I come back. She's not there. She called the police. So I waited a minute. Yeah. I said, nah, this ain't even right. So I called the boss and I said, hey, listen, hey, do you mind calling so-and-so and let her know that I am who I say I am and I'm here for the reason I say I was. So he calls them. And, of course, she was getting ready to call the police on yep. me. And her reasoning was that she said that she thought that I had stolen the truck and that, that I wasn't who I said I was, even though I was wearing the logo of the truck that I was driving and the truck had a logo on it and I had equipment to take to look at their, look at their equipment. So... You must be the best, uh, like m- most gracious burglar ever. Like, hey, I'm gonna steal this truck and finish this route. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So Dave says, Dave says, do you wanna do you wanna stay and and check out their uh, equipment and stuff, or do you wanna just go? I said, I want to stay and see what she's gonna say. Better man than me. I know what you did it for, but so what happened? So she comes out, and of course she says that she's not racist. And of course, she says that um, that that she had an incident when she was younger where a guy did something to her. And so I was like, OK, all right. I said, well, um, I'm sorry that it happened to you. Um, and then we walked to the back. I did my thing back there and she was talking to me, you know, like it was like nothing that ever happened. But she did apologize maybe like four or five times and kept saying she's not racist or whatnot. Yeah. But did she say she had a black friend. <laughs> that's always the that's always the go to. I'm not racist. I do have a black friend, but not friends. One of my best friends, but black. black. But listen though, the, the the crazy thing about it was this: when we got like halfway to her screen enclosure, I don't know. It was like something happened where she like got claustrophobic, and it clicked. Like we're alone. It's just me and him, and like she just took off running. I'm like. <laughs> I'm thinking like where you going? I'm, I'm thinking like maybe the food, her her stove is oh, on or something, gotcha, gotcha, or, yeah. or she yeah. got to get a phone call yeah. or something like that. Bro, she went to that door like I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I need to see some ID. It freaked yeah. me out. Well, you, you said this was your first time ever meeting her. Yeah, I mean, but the way we set up our our uh, accounts that we usually just go to people's houses and just walk because it was it was a scheduled day, so they should have been expecting us. Whether if 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 Bobby came or Billy came yeah. or Michael came, that we're already scheduled for that day. Are there, are there many? Oh, you're going to say some, Jeff? So just to confirm. Yes. There's a scheduled appointment for the time frame in which you showed up. Two, two to three hours. Two to three hours, which yeah. that's the flex when, you when, give when, when, when you're when, making an appointment, right? Yes. So she's ex- she should be expecting someone from your company to show up. Yes. You show up. Yes. With the truck. Yes. Wearing the uniform. Yes. Introduce yourself. Yes. State the facts as to why you're there and what you'd like to do and ask her to open up the gate. Yes. She goes in. Opens up the gate, yes. walks halfway to the pool with you, yes. and then it hits her like, I may be in danger. <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> Gazoom type. <laughs> so you somehow was able to steal the truck, yes. steal the uniform, I'm that good. identify w- around what day and time frame she was expecting you guys. And the house. And the house. Yes. Okay, Mass, is how many people in your organization are people of color? So in my company, in your company, yeah, I'm the only. Well, you, you, well, two, two, okay, two. So at the time of it, was there two or just you? Were there two of us there at, at that incident? No, at the time of the incident, were you only only black person working there, black guy, when this incident happened? No, but the other person of color doesn't go to her house. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So no, but my point is, so again, um, just because being a minority. I'll put in, you know, I'll I'll play devil's advocate. So it could have been, okay, you're from this, I understand. And it could maybe not have been a racist thing. Like, okay, I don't know this guy. This is thing. What am I doing? Trusting. Oh, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like you could be, you could work for the company. 
But let's be real too. There's other there are people that work for companies that commit crimes, that rape people. True, true. and that it, it, you know it's n- nothing is ever said because they're afraid. Because at the end of the day, you're you know the route. I'll threaten you say anything, and I'll be here next week. Or I'll be here next month to do your pool. Um, but I'm not questioning whether she's a racist or not. I'm just questioning the thought process. The thought process from giddy up, right? Because he yeah. does all these things. Why not ask for him to? you know, ID himself right out the gate. Why not call the company and say, hey, look, I've got someone here. I'm not too sure. Like, you know, is is Raymond scheduled to come out here today? There were several different avenues that she could have taken to protect herself. I'm sure it was mentioned that he was coming. What was even crazy is that I even said that the guy who was supposed to be there, Uh he had had an appointment today. So I'm here to uh, take his place today. I even told her. I even said his name. Did you feel like uh, Justin, like for being on the offense, did you feel like you had to over explain yourself because you knew a feeling like, okay, let me over explain myself so you feel comfortable because I already know you're not okay with this or to make you, to make you feel more comfortable, let me over explain everything from A to B to Z so you feel, you know, uh, you feel okay with this because you already felt it. I usually do. I know, because you have to. I usually do, and let me tell you this as well. I mean, most times when I go to people's homes yeah, with a guy I'm training or they never come to me first. Never. Wow. And, 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 and I'm not even, off. like, being funny about it. Right. That piss me I'm, off. I'm, I'm used to it. Right. And I, and I allow it to happen, and I watch it, and I watch how that person goes, Raymond, um, what is the answer to that question? And I look right at them, and I, I give them the answer, you know. And I what and what I do as well, I go way over the top. I, I over explain. Right. Mm-hmm. I give them so much information, and they're like, "Oh, okay, so he is more than qualified." Right. Yeah. But yes, I go out of my way as well because you feel like you have to. True. But yeah. isn't that the plight of like minorities in general? Like you know, we were joking around earlier yeah. about the soccer game and coming out to support you and people looking at us sideways, but you mentioned something, you know, little things like we are wired a certain way. Yeah, so we are. if you're entering a store with a product in your hand, you know, as a brown man, I need to make this easily visible for cameras Absolutely. and everyone coming in so it raises no doubt. Absolutely. You're entering, like you said, a gas station or you have something, you're making sure that you are perfectly seen and you it leaves no questions Absolutely. as to your intent or why you're here or you're not moving in a shady way. So... On some level, we are always aware. performing. We're in aware. A, right. We, mm-hmm. We're always conducting ourselves in a way to to make other people comfortable. feel comfortable. Yeah, we're self-conscious our of our actions because we have to be. Yeah, we're self-conscious. Like, how does this look? So it's always always being on the inside, also being on the outside. How does this look? Well, if, if I was that person and I'm trained to think this person is a criminal, what do you know? What what would I do to make them feel comfortable with me walking in the store, and uh, make sure my hands are in my pocket, make sure there's no question, you know, and there's not there's no questionable thoughts in their head that okay he may have put M and M's in his pocket. Let me sh- make sure everything I grab is Easy. is tele yeah. is telegraphed. Yeah. And and you know, Bro Rand's family yeah. in no way are we painting uh, a negative picture of this lady's interaction with Raymond. That's not what we're saying. You know, she, I actually think it's very smart if you are yeah. a single lady and you are home and there's somebody that comes to your door that you do not recognize. I think it is more than fair than to say, hey, I need you to produce some ID. I need you to make me comfortable yeah, absolutely. with who you are and why you're here before, you know what, I let you onto my property I think what I'm questioning is like she kind of got pretty deep into the process before. <laughs> yeah. Like when 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 you when, when you were Usain Bolt to your screen yeah. room and glide like yeah. door after the fact, it like was after too late by right, then. Right. <laughs> hey, you know hey, you've been, you been God at that point. So hey, like, at least she gave it an effort. You know what I mean? Most of them give up. Like yo, never, right? she listened to what her inner calling. You know, her right. inner thought, or, whatever that. Yeah, whatever, like, whatever, <laughs> whatever subconscious, whatever was telling her to. Hey, that voice inside it said, "Hey, this could be he could be a good guy, but I'm not taking that right. risk." Whether it stemmed from her child, whatever right. happened in her child being assaulted or whatever, um, in her childhood, yeah, I respect that. Um, you know what's even crazy about it though? What like after it happened and, and like uh, time went on, uh, when my son played soccer years ago, I happened to see her at 
in one the, of the games at the, at the games. We didn't play on the same team. Yeah, but but I would see her there, and I always would speak to her. You would? Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Would she? Would she talk? Would she? Would she talk? Well, yeah. She would. It would be like, hey, it, it would be like that because you know it was. She was in a safe area because yeah, you know. Ooh, but yeah, but I made sure I. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. You know, yeah. every time. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to do it. Make sure she sees you and you uh, <laughs> make her feel that uncomfortable. <laughs> I did on purpose too. Uh, another thing off topic, um, because I just came out too. Um, did you guys see the whole Bob Saget thing? And how what the rule of death now is the, the something about head trauma? Head Supposedly trauma. hit his head, or there's some form of head trauma. Yeah, he hit his head or something. They said he accidentally hit his head. Must have accidentally hit his head and and and, and died in his sleep because he had a, a bleeding. His brain was bleeding. Right, right. You know, I know, I know. Sometimes you, you've heard so much, we've heard so bad that we're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna sleep this <laughs> sleep this off. So uh, it was just some questionable things. Um, to me, I don't know if they were able to, because they, I don't know if there was an investigation up front, but I know immediate, immediately when it happened, they were like, okay, lucky like passed away in his sleep. That was but, an initial. But don't they mention that up front? Like, okay, he had some bruising or they have to wait till they perform the entire investigation, even though they said it was natural. When they said, well, he had a bruising, that's the first thing you would see. I would think if there's something on that level of trauma to the, someone's head, you would think, but maybe they needed to conduct the investigation yeah. to confirm whether they believed it was foul play or not. Because you could see the bruising, Damn. but maybe you're trying to establish, like, okay, was this self-inflicted? Was yeah. this an accident? Is there foul play? And you can't really tip your hand until you've come to, uh, you know, until you've made your peace with what it what it might be. But isn't it also up to the family to uh, decide if they want to do an autopsy as well? Uh, I don't know. When something When something dies like that... When someone dies, um, I think that it's always up to the coroner or the county or, or the agency to do the investigation just to conduct what the cause of death was. Because for someone as healthy as he was, even though he's 65, he was still active. He did a show the same night, um, the following the, the night before he passed away, and he drove all the way to Orlando. So I think he drove from Tampa or he drove down south, from down south to Orlando. And uh, he... Um, so anything, anytime it's unnatural that they feel it's it's um, premature, you you have to conduct a, 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 a autopsy yeah. to I'm, rule out anything that's it could be homicide, poisoning, anything like that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar with the process, but I'll tell you when this when this story broke, my default thought process was foul play. I just felt like oh really yeah I did it, it, it fell in two categories for me it was either foul play or like some form of like suicide or something wow like that's kind of where my thought process went to and that's not fair I'm just yeah you know like like you said he he recently did a show he didn't really give any indications of there being any <clears throat> real physical issues right yeah and then all of a sudden poof you know like you find him. In in this room, it's kind of like that. I that know, just, so weird. That just is weird. I know. know. That's that's not something. Not to say it can't happen. Yeah, I know. But that doesn't happen. And not only that, I mean, do, I don't know. Does it usually take a month? That's you what know? I'm saying. Does like, it usually take a month for, for things like that to pop up with, with the results? Well, it says here, it says, is uh, this is by the uh, Orange County Medical Examiner's Office. Uh -huh. It says, uh, it is in my opinion that the death of Robert Saget, Saget a 65-year-old white male found unresponsive in a hotel room is a result of a blunt head trauma. It is the most probable that the – it doesn't say deceased. It says decedent mm -hmm. suffered an unwitnessed fall backwards and struck the posterior aspect of his head. The manner of death is accident. And this is a statement from the chief medical examiner, Dr. Joshua D. Stephanie, in his report. And and I was gonna, the one thing I was thinking too is it could have happened um, that he could have slipped and fell out of the shower, and it being a late drive because he showed he took a selfie and was like, okay, um, hey, killed the show. He had a selfie like at at the end of the the show. I had a mm -hmm. selfie. Oh, I love. I killed it. Mm -hmm. Da da da. <clears throat> See you guys. Whatever. And he, on my drive to Orlando, so he had to drive to Orlando. So, and not only that. Uh, another statement came out that he had he was COVID positive. That's correct. Yeah. So he was, uh, you know, all that could play into him. Pro and he had his booster shot uh, two weeks prior. 
So anything could play into him being exhausted or whatever. Or yeah, but do we know where they where they found the body? He was in bed. He was in bed. His hand was on his chest, and his other hand was his left hand was across his chest, and his right hand was laying next to his, his side. Well, they also said though he also had an enlarged heart, ninety five percent blocked on one side. Wow, I didn't see that. I don't know what that means. Ninety five percent blocked. Ninety five percent blocked on one side. Wow. I don't but know if no, that's risk of no alcohol was present in the system. Yeah, no, no drugs either. Toxicology report. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It's um, I, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I was I was loving the Fuller House. I like that corny stuff, man. I was a DJ Tanner, um, Cameron, uh, Candace Cameron, uh, crush, you know, DJ from Full House. But it also said that it contained uh, clonazepam. And clonopin, which is taken for uh, seizures, seizures, Ooh, okay. uh, pan- panic disorders, and anxiety. Yeah. And additionally, the uh, antidepressant trazodone mm-hmm. was found in the system as well. Well, every celebrity, I think, is a little depressed. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> the crazy mean. thing about Bob is you see that character, yeah, on Full House, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. wholesome, right? Dan- Danny you're Tanner, like man, this guy is the embodiment of, of white picket fence yeah. dog family, like dad jokes. Yep. Then you see his stand up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> or you just uh, see him talking like offbeat on like, you know, different shows and yeah. stuff like that. And it was like, wow, who is this dude? I know. Like, it's like, how, like, were you always like this? And if that's the case, yes. Like, who decided, like, let's cast this guy for this show? Because you know what? Even though what's coming out of his mouth is super raunchy, he has that look. Or. Uh-huh. Was he not like that? And after the show, it was just like, look, I need to break out of this this, this stereotype character. No, from when I looked at I seen one of his stand-ups, and uh, it's from his dad. It's like his dad would tell him all these raunchy jokes as an oh, 11-year-old, really? and he just grew up and was like, Dad, I'm 11. Yeah. And he, so he has a stand-up uh, routine where he's like, Dad, I'm 11, and he just goes on and, you know, saying how his dad just told him these crazy jokes. Um and he has a stand-up routine that he says it. And it's, so it's all it's crazy. him. Like, <laughs> it's from his time, father. The mm-hmm. first time I saw like some of his stand-up, somebody yeah. told me about it. I'm like, who? Full House guy? Exactly. Nah, Danny Tanner? Here. Danny? No way. Nah, no way. But that speaks volumes about how great of an actor he was because he sold oh, it, man. He yeah. sold the hell out of absolutely. it. I wasn't a big fan of his, though. Yeah, no. Why not? No. I don't know. I just didn't like his. Like, he just wasn't funny to me. Agreed. I, I didn't find him. I didn't find him funny. It just I thought it was like such a, such a huge change from the yeah. image that he 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 you know he had on that show. The image yeah. he portrayed on that show. Yeah, exactly. And you see him in stand up, and you're like, it was night and day, like absolute right. night and day. Yeah, just, yeah. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Was it? No. Oh, okay. Well, you didn't like Fuller House. You liked. Uh, I like Family Matters too, bro. I mean, I liked Fuller House. Yeah, but, but you didn't I, like Danny Tanner. Who, wait, did you have a crush on any of those girls? Negative. Okay. What about you, Jeff? <laughs> you know, I wasn't. I wasn't like the the girl. Well, actually, um, the DJ Tanner, um, the the brother's girlfriend. Oh, she was cute. Uh, you talking about um the brother in law? You talking about um Jesse's girlfriend? Yeah, Jesse's girl, wife. Yeah. yeah, she was. Uh, she still looks great. Well, yeah, she still looks great. And she's she, she got in trouble for all that stuff too uh, with, with the, the college. The college <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the college admissions. <laughs> Remember, they were um, trying to get their kids uh, into yeah, 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 to yeah, these yeah. Uh, uh, you know USC. Ivy leagues and stuff USC. like that. USC. Yeah, these mm-hmm. yeah Division One and Ivy. You know, uh, Didn't so you have yeah. to do some time. No time. No time. Time no. served. Term already served. What? Dude, she and the COVID made it easy. Yeah, somebody definitely did time. I mean, seriously. Oh, we're I don't, supposed think, to, I don't think anyone did time, man. Four yeah. months, six months, I don't think they really did time, man. I think it's more like weeks. Yeah, they didn't really do time, man. They they plead they pleaded their guilt. Uh huh. And because of COVID, you know, you got the best lawyers, man. You're gonna get out of it. So the guy's name is William H. Macy. Okay. So his wife. Which is Felicity or something, right? Felicia something. Uh the blonde girl Felicity from- Huffman. Thank you. But uh, he had a pretty good show on Netflix, though, called Shameless. Oh, Shameless. Yes, I knew you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was good. Speaking of shows, man, Um, I know I talked to you before. Have you seen Euphoria or no? No, I didn't watch Euphoria. That's on, uh, is that Prime? Uh, HBO. HBO. HBO Max. HBO's Max. So, yeah, Euphoria. Uh, I know I talked to you. This episode, episode five for season two, if you don't understand the... 
uh, mindset or what a family member deals with someone with addiction, mm-hmm. watch that show. Holy crap. I mean, I'll give, um, gosh, what's her name? Zendaya. Zendaya. Mm-hmm. Kudos for that episode because it was uh, all the actresses and actors because it was so dark and so understand like you had empathy so and then you so, so it's a good show yeah it's a good show but episode five well it's once you get out of the whole like I said all the male anatomies and stuff is all good um it's it's good it has a good storyline that why you guys talk about male anatomy last like, yeah, yeah bro. not you guys I, I haven't seen a single episode. <laughs> Yo, my my nephew was like, uh, my nephew was like, oh no, it's it's prosthetic. I was like, I don't care if it's prosthetic, <laughs> but he was like, no, no. He's like the, the the lead actors. I said, of course not. They're not gonna have their junk out there like that. But if you're a featured extra, yeah, that's your swing in there. And, you know, that's your your stuff. You actually swing in because you don't have. You're just trying to make your get your face out there, basically. So if they tell you, is it really a face that's getting put out there? It's a sh- in their mind, there is. It's a show. It's a show. It's a sad show. Like every episode, is sad and sad and sadder. It's not like sad like that. It's you just realize what someone deals with addiction, and since the you know uh, pandemic, uh, or it's a, yeah, it's a pandemic when it has to deal with teenagers getting into drugs sooner than before because of the opioid uh, but, situation. So it's explaining it from that that perspective. But do you do you feel like when you watch it, it's like no, nah, you don't feel like depressed or anything. Like you just feel like, damn, come. When is she gonna straighten up? Like, oh gosh, is she really gonna turn back? But then you, you know, then you, the episode five, season two. Like, if you guys watch it and get to that point, you're like, holy crap! You know, all this has to stem from her father dying of cancer, and didn't know how to deal with it. But she started using his can- drugs that he had for cancer, whether it be for pain or whatever. That's how she got on the drugs to kind of relate with him because she, she was giving him the medicine and then she started taking the medicine. I think I wait for your, uh, your, your, uh, vlog about it. When you vlog it, I'll, I'll wait for that. <laughs> what? Vlog it? When you vlog it. I'll, I'll wait for your vlog. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. On that note, uh, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And it says, okay, take me to this one. And the guy goes, okay. I goes, that in a good neighborhood? He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Guy barely speaks English. He takes us there. We get out and we're giggling. Oh, we're going to see Planet of the Apes. We walk into Planet of the Apes. (laughs) We walked into Africa, dude. We, we, We walked in the door and there was no white people. What are you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, dad's black, mom's white. Standard issue, pretty much. Powerful, powerful combination, genetic wise, right? You get the body of the black man, and then you get the mind of the white man all right. together in some yeah. strange combination. Sorry, that doesn't, by the next. way, mean that black people don't have brains. It's no. a different brain. So, Joe Rogan. Who's that? That's, <laughs> that's the talk we're gonna. Uh, news. That's the news going on. Uh, now he's the latest news. Uh, he's he's always been a little controversial, right? So now there's these uh, clip going around, well, a compilation clip of him saying the the dirty n word. Um, that clip was crazy, by the way, very crazy. So I I didn't. Uh, so when it first came out, yeah, I didn't watch the clip first. I was just like, I, I heard him say, yeah. it. I've heard him say it once or twice in a couple of interviews, but it was. In, in a conversation or something, right? Mm-hmm. But when I watched that clip and they got them all together like that, yep, I was like, whoa. I mean, whoever did the editing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The only thing that thing was missing was a beat. I know. <laughs> it was crazy. It was bad. It was bad. And then, um, so, yeah, you watched it. I mean, I'll go ahead and play. <laughs> I don't even know if I can play it. No, nah, you should uh, we, we know. Why, why we're looking it? for it, they can find it. Yeah, you should play it. And... <laughs> Did you see the other? Um, well, that was, you know, the way it was said, I was like, okay, um, 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, whatever. He, he said it. I'm like, okay, listening. And he's like, oh, it's taken out of context. You know, he had an apology. Um, okay, which one are you talking about right now? I'm talking, to, I'm talking about the, the compilation. Yeah, the compilation. So he had that, and then okay. he had the apology right after that. And so people swore on that off. Like, okay, well, he's apologized. And then after you had the, the incident with the Planet of the Apes. That one. So when you see that, and then you're like, wait, what did he say? He's like, oh, man, you know, we get in Harlem, and then you go over here, and then it's like, you know, all these black people is like, we're in the Planet of the Apes. And he yeah. goes, oh, that sounds bad. That sounds racist. I mean, we're not in Africa, and Planet of the Apes weren't in Africa. So it's like, what are you referring to as apes? Yeah, um, yeah he, that, that, that was very harsh. That was, that was pretty bad. And then you had one where he was like, um, there was a mixed guy he had on on the on on the, um, the program, uh huh. And he was like, "Oh, I'm mixed." And he said, "Oh, well, that's cool. You know, you've got you know the best of both worlds. You, you, you know, you got the the, the black body and uh, the white brain. I mean, not saying anything about the black brain. I mean, it's just different." <laughs> I guess I guess the question would be, uh, do you feel that he's racist? Now hold up! Before we get into that, can we can we pause for a second? Because I know you've checked out probably more episodes than we have, uh-huh. and you mentioned a few moments ago that you've listened to the show and you've heard him use the use the word. Mm-hmm. Two questions: In those instances, how did that make you feel? And two, do you believe his use of the word was a reflection of? who he was as a person or how he felt about the Brown community. So from the, the video that that's, that's playing out. Yeah. Um, if you look at it, those are older. Yeah. They're older. Yeah. Those are before. Yeah. I listened to him. Okay. And then you can tell that it was a different Joe. It was a different Joe Rogan. Right. The, the one I heard, as I listened to Joe Rogan, he's evolved. Yeah. And he's more, I think he's more aware, and he may have learned from his mistakes. And I think with him evolving, that he and the people, the friends that he's made throughout time, and this and that, I think he's come to the conclusion that I can't be that person. You know, he's a better person now. I think, you know, he may have had some thoughts. And he may still have some thoughts, but at the same time, I think he's not the same person he was years ago because people do change. So I think it's easy to paint a picture of anyone. Imagine someone going through the last couple decades of your life and nitpicking at specific moments or terms uh, or words that you use and putting it together in a 30 second spiel. I think if you do that to anyone, yes. for the most part, you can paint any picture. Yeah, you put you a want, sound bite. Right? Red, um, yeah. yeah. And so I felt like the video, the way it was done, was super flagrant as far as its intent. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That said, you can't put that video together unless you know what you felt comfortable enough to drop that word that many times. Okay. Uh-huh. And I am a huge fan of free speech and, you know, doing away with uh, censorship and all of that. And I also feel like when it comes to Joe, a lot of this is coming about due to his status. the powers that be yeah. wanting to control the narrative I because yes. he's touching on things or covering topics that are in opposition to what we're being told in other areas. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where this whole shit storm is brewing. That said, it is really hard as someone that doesn't really follow Joe on that level even with me understanding why this whole storm is coming about, even with me being able to dissect that little compilation and realize like, okay, this is his, uh, if if there was such a thing as a greatest hits, this is his greatest worst moments, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and mm. actually even then it's it's not even the full spiel. We just got uh, a quick snippet of, of, of just some outlandish stuff. But then Mm -hmm. you hear some of the other comics and I know you've got stuff like, um, What's uh, Howard Stern? Yeah. Like, you know, shock radio. Sometimes you say and you do things because you're really just trying to generate a feeling. Even if it's a bad one, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to get your name out there. They say even bad publicity is good publicity, right? That's what so, they say. You know, not I, all the time. I, I, well, yeah, not all the time. Uh, 
But at the end of the day, even with free speech, and I say this all the time, and I, and I try to pound this into my kids, there is a responsibility that comes with whatever comes out of your mouth. Right. And there is a, there's an, an, a, an accountability mm-hmm. piece to it. And so you're welcome to say whatever you want, right? And I feel like you should. But I think you need to be ready to deal with the, the consequences, consequences of what I, comes out of that. I agree. And that's with not you. necessarily, in my opinion, there's a difference between saying, you know what, you shouldn't be able to say that and then saying it and then dealing with the consequences of it. When you tell somebody that they can't say something, I feel like that is when you are really impeding on free speech. But that doesn't mean it doesn't come without consequence. I and I think you. he's dealing with the consequence. And yes. it's really hard for me as a brown man to take everything that's come out of his mouth and say, Hey, you get a pass. Like it just, even though I understand the circumstances and the why and the timing, it is really hard for me to hear that without knowing the man or following his show and say, Hey, you know what? You get a pass. Cause it's, it, there's some repeat patterns and it's not just specific to Brown people. He's covered a variety of topics, which is why I'm like, some of it is probably on some shock level, but it's like, dude, it's, it sounds now bad. you're dealing with the consequences of, of, you know what, of that concept of any publicity is good publicity because yeah. it will come back. No, absolutely. Uh, there's two, um, well, one, um, two things. Um, should he have been saying that word? No. Should anyone be saying the N word? No. Should it be used in mainstream hip hop and, 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 and I think us as a um, community have allowed that word that it, that has suppressed us by our oppressors. Like we, you and I talked about Jeff for empowerment and we've taken it and we've now <laughs> changed what we, I, I we've done exactly yes. what they wanted us to do with it. You we, we're, you know, we, we, what power do you have? I mean, anytime I'm, I'm around and I hear something, anytime I'm in a, a group that, that is a different ethnic group, and I hear that, I'm, I feel shame. I feel like, oh, you know, you feel like someone's pointing, you know, going to, you know, being in the only, let's say, one or two percent in the class that is colored, right, or, or black. You feel like when someone, when when history comes up, when black history comes up or something, you feel like you're, you're being um, um, singled out. You feel like, oh, shit, you know, they're going to. You know, look at me and, and immediately, oh, the rap music is playing. I didn't play it, but I'm at this party and they're playing the rap music and here comes the N-word and, you know, you know, uh, it's going to play out. And you, you just feel this 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 shame or, or you know, you just feel like you're, um, I don't say outnumbered, but you just feel like, okay, everyone's going to look at me because <laughs> that word and they're going to act like they didn't hear it, but they're playing this the explicit thing. But it's okay because it's hip hop and, you know, you're my black friend and... Uh, so it, it just makes you feel uncomfortable. It always makes me feel uncomfortable. That's one. I don't think we should be using the word. Um, and I'll get you guys' thoughts on that. I don't think we should be using that. And the third thing, this compilation I was watching on Dune Research, he said this has been out for a few years. He's, he actually said in an interview he was happy that it was out because, you know, he knew the video would surface one day. It's been out. Someone's put this together. We always have to ask ourselves as people, always have a a critical thinking mind. Why is this coming out? And it has to do whatever guess he had in the last month dealing with the vaccines. Uh, Dr. Malone, I think. Yes. So it has more so to do with him questioning the powers that be over this, getting the jab. And I mean, you know, everything from YouTube and everything you you're censored and it's all dealing with the censorship and him speaking out. And he's got the platform. He's got the support that, he literally can touch the things and he has an influence. So it's almost like, are you guys bringing this up as a scapegoat to use us, to use a community as a scapegoat for him to silence him finally because the other shit wasn't working because, you know, he would have a specialist touch on this or have a scientist touch on that and bring facts. And, and, and cause I was watching in his 10 minute, uh, um, appeal, you know, he was trying to appeal to his uh, audience saying, hey, when I mentioned, when they mentioned the, I mentioned cloths were not, um, you know, um, effective when it came to COVID, they told me it was, you know, it was fake news and whatever. Now it's in, you know, Newsly, you know, uh, the first, you know, the front page of Newsweek, mm-hmm. 
when I mentioned, um, uh, you know, he was like, when I mentioned that, hey, you can still get COVID from the vaccine. When you have the vaccine, you can spread it. They were like, oh, no, he's, he's talking to. And then it comes out eight months later. It's true. So he's challenged, um, which I think we should be able to do. He challenged the mainstream. Yeah, which I think we should be able mm-hmm. to do is free, be free thinkers and critical thinkers and not just, hey, because your government tells you this, accept the, the T, accept it because you're, you're being, you, you know, you're being told it's good. I'm your government. Because we all know governments have um, done wrong by the people. And you're supposed to question your government. You should have that right. Not You don't want to be in a... We don't want to be in a, a communist uh, United States uh, where we can't... Or a dictatorship where we can't think freely. And if we do, we'll be, you know, God forbid, you know, um, exiled or put in prison. And that's scary. I agree with you as far as the word. Go back to the word. Yeah. I, I don't use it. Yeah, I, I use it when I was younger, uh-huh. and I stopped using it because I, I felt like, am I am I helping or hurting? Exactly. And I had an old guy. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not an old guy. I had a uh, a mature, a, a mature uh, seasoned gentleman. A seasoned gentleman <laughs> told me he said that he told me, young man, when you use that word, you disrespect yourself and your people. I said, yes, sir. So I don't use that word anymore. Uh, but I feel like um, Joe was a truth seeker. Yeah, you know he he seeks the truth absolutely. And if you watch a lot of his episodes, he um every once in a while he'll go back to like cities like Chicago or Baltimore, and he'll ask these people like people who have influence and power. He'll ask them how is it these cities like Chicago and Baltimore they've had crime and poverty for years. What can we do to fix that? Mm. How can we help them people? Yeah, because whatever whatever's going on, it's not working. Mm-hmm. I mean, he tries to figure out a way we can we can make a change in America, and and that's for the people of color. I mean, he tries to find a different way, and you know, he tries to find the truth, and I appreciate that about him. This montage that we've seen today, I don't appreciate that, but once again, this is a, a clip of his whole gamut of uh, interviews. I mean, he's had. You know, I don't know how many interviews. It's tremendous amount, and um, like Jeff said earlier, you can you can you can follow anyone's life and take videos of their past, and you could put them on the video, and we will all look bad. I, ext- I mean, my past is crazy, but you know, luckily that you know no one has me on video right. <laughs> saying crazy stuff, so. Uh, that's the society cool. we live in now with the social media everything's oh. documented um, oh my goodness yes and, and, and speaking touching on what you just said too also if you look back earlier that's when he was more so the stand-up comedian so oh, yeah. they, they say a lot of his mm-hmm. stuff is like what you would say in a raunchy stand-up type of deal the way he was the way he conducted himself is almost for a laugh so you know it's almost performance and i'm not saying it's right but no. i'm just saying that's where you can see probably where his mindset is back then versus where it's now where he's mature and he's actually realizing he may not be a journalism, but like you say, he's a platform for questions for truth for, you know, being a truth seeker. And another thing, we are the only race that allows this thing to be publicized and allows everyone to use it and to be played in music mainstream. And then we are offended when we expect another race (laughs) not to say the word when it's in the, that's music. Yes. When yes. it's in the lyric. Like we're okay, you're around us respected. So what do you do when you're not around us? You're gonna sing the the whether it's at A or E R, you're gonna say it when you're not around us. So I don't I don't understand that this this oh, this rule of thumb that when you're around us you don't say it. But when you go in your car and you're playing the music, it's all good. It's on now. Yeah, you got it you gotta when you sing the lyrics. It's it needs to be straight across the board. It's not said at all. And yeah. the best example, like you said, it shouldn't be we shouldn't be singing it, we shouldn't be saying it, we shouldn't be praising it. I agree. We're not in power, and I'm sorry, Jeff, what were you going to say? It's the height of dysfunction. If I call you a jackass yeah. and you take offense to that term because you understand at the core what it means, you understand that is it is derogatory in nature, you understand that it is, uh, you know, almost... You know, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of, like, referring to you as less than. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you felt that way for 10 years. And then on a Monday, you wake up one day and the guy next door 
says calls you jackass, but he's mm-hmm. like, nah, you know, I, I said it, but it doesn't mean the same thing. Everybody else think the words means the same thing. The the word the, the words the the meaning behind the word the history behind the word hasn't changed. So just because we've become comfortable with it and using it with one another, it doesn't change the context. It doesn't change the history. And there's all kinds of people that are going to argue with me and say, well, no, it's been a transition of power. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's what you make of it. And it's and, spelled different. And, and yeah. it's spelled different. And it yeah. means. And you know what? To each his own. Maybe it's about a path of maturity. But like you said, Reg. Yeah. It is what it is. And to allow it in black cinema, to allow it in yep. music, to allow it um, in every other capacity for the world to use at their leisure and pick and choose if they say it out loud, depending on the company they're in. Exactly. And then want to be so super offended yeah. when we hear someone that we deem yep. unworthy to use it or not having the right to use it is the stupidest thing ever. If it's bad because Bob says it, then it should be bad because Laura said it. <laughs> it should exactly. be bad or, or Jerome. if Raheem said it. <laughs> yep. It's bad, okay? And so with this situation with Joe, it is a battle of conscience for me because I am a huge fan of, like you said, I, I like the term you use, truth seeker, right? Like that, mm-hmm. I, I agree. I feel like he's challenging the norms. He is moving or, you know, at his own pace and frequency and basically challenging the blanket messaging that we're receiving from multiple sources. And that is what I feel triggered this whole thing, because it's like, man, we can't really get him under control. And, you know, you mentioned something about the comedy and, you know, the shock value of what he has to say. Here's the truth, fellas. Joe's success is through years and years of finding a formula that works, right? Yeah. And the truth is, is Joe as successful if he doesn't go through some of the bumps and bruises of obtaining that audience, of growing his audience, right? Mm-hmm. We all have had to grow in, in certain areas. That said, I didn't need to step into a pit of fire to know it's going to burn. So I think that's where I take issue with it. And I know people will say, well, with free speech comes... You have to be open to what you're going to hear, right? Because you can't yeah. say, well, you can say what you want and then be super offended by it. But at the yeah. same time, free speech comes with consequences. And, yeah. and that's where I'm at with Joe. I'm not I'm not saying, you know, let's, let's march and get the pitchforks. I can't believe what this guy did yeah. because I understand what's triggering all of this. And the other issue I took, and I think we talked about this earlier, all these people that stepped out and was like, oh, you yeah. know what? remove my stuff because you know what he is spreading misinformation and you know what i just can't share the same platform it was that same outreach for all these things that took place prior to 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 the vaccination talks yeah. right like <laughs> where where was the outrage you weren't Dude. you weren't like battling down yeah. the gates talking exactly. about we can't be here because look at the comments that he made that were derogatory towards Dude. the black community or women or anyone else that was okay but now it's like, okay, well, you know what? You're not really in line with how I feel that, you know, things are proceeding with this pandemic and the, the caution that should be taken. It's like, all right, now I need to step forward and, and, and leave my mark and force you into a situation. So I'm really torn because in one breath, I'm like, Joe, go do your thing. Fight the forces that be, you know, you keep speaking on, um, you, you, you know, maintain your open format and challenge the status quo. But at the same time, I can't completely turn a blind eye or ear <laughs> to just the absolute flagrant abuse um, of, of things that came out of his mouth. No, absolutely. But, but it, it, and, and let's look at it from the other perspective. Uh, let's look at it from another side as well, because uh, with, with um, Biden as a president, he has, he said some things that we can say are really racist. Uh, he said Obama is the 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 you know the the uh, uh, you know, a, a black person. We finally have a black person that's clean and and well educated. And when I mean the <laughs> thing, the rhetoric shit that he's come out and said, we can we, we can crucify him for. But we, we, we are we going to tell him to, that he has stepped down as president? No, we can't. Yeah, but I, I can't control that because 
I was my vote. We should be able to. But, but we I, should be able vote, to. But but that's why we're we're in a democracy because you know what? It was the masses that elected him, even with his history. With Joe, I have a little more control. I can't control who runs the country or the decisions he makes. I get one vote, but I can choose who I, cho- you know, who I uh, allow to infiltrate my mind space or my downtime mm. with their show. Who I choose to support from a podcast standpoint. So that's that's where it gets a little tricky. Well, but I agree with far, you. Wrong uh, is wrong. As well, far as his viewership, as far as Joe's, he's got eleven million. As far as quarter three of twenty twenty one, there you go. And then from there on, it goes. Three million, two million, two million, two million, two million, two million, one million, and then less than that. Like the the closest is eight million away. Okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, and that's and you crazy, and that's and that's why they're trying to to get kind of wrangle him and get him under control and, and to control the narrative because he's then, got too much too much influence right and now. And then not even and not one and all those are TV mainstream. Those are TV mainstream shows. No, no, I I got I was just looking at this one quote from uh, New York Post. Uh <laughs> but uh Joe good old Joe. <laughs> the younger Joe Biden asked Chicago based corporate attorney George Messires how much money do I owe you before adding because and N word? You better not be charging me Hennessy rates. Say say that again. <laughs> How much do I owe you before adding because N word? N word. Better not be charging me Hennessy rates. Who's this is Biden said this? This is Biden. When was this? This was um I don't know when it was. This was the younger Joe, but it was by um, Samuel Chamberlain, June 8, 2021, the New York Post. Was he drinking some Hennessy that day? Probably. No. Because <laughs> he's a drinker. He's a, you could tell he's a drinker. He's a fighter. The thing is, but again, look, you can't. You, you, you just, Biden, when it comes to Romney's approach to financial regulations, will put y'all back in chains. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> Biden's. Uh, look, look. He told it slave state Delaware in Southern strategy. Look, I mean, you've got the first sort of mainstream African American who's articulate and bright and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, that's a storybook, man. Here's the problem, though. Like politics carries different weight because you get one vote. And so you can take you can make your peace with the fact that. I didn't vote for that guy. But ultimately, if he's elected, he's elected. You can't do anything about that. And until we move away from this two party situation where you're really limited to your options, <laughs> this is our this is our reality. No, I'm just saying. But but, but we can, Joe is in operates in the well, the other Joe <laughs> operates in a slightly different space. Oh, that's and right. Yeah. You have the a right little somebody. more control right. as to whether you choose to support Joe or not. And, and, and he's not hurting. Mm-hmm. Right. Because he's got a huge fan base. You know, it's a crazy thing, too. I, I'm really interested to see what happens after this. I'm curious to see if. He starts to lose viewers or cool. uh, Joe. Uh, Rogan, but I, I suspect gain. he's going to gain some. I think he's going. Well, gain. he's already been offered a hundred million from Rumble. Yeah, to take I his plat, take that, take his uh, his uh, platform. I think he declined it too. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Spotify has been sticking with him, and they've gone and and started taking things that were in fact checked off, and 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 going through with the fine comb. I think they also offered to uh, invest like it was like a, a couple million um into uh support of uh you know some of the um, i forgot the terminology that they to like use. rate the shows or like to like no, a like, like a disclaimer or something no no they're i think they are scrubbing his old podcast but they're also going to take money and donate it towards the support of like is it disenfranchised oh, oh gosh please uh I don't know if it's like people or uh, or bro. If you say the yeah. Negro United Negro Scholarship <laughs> no. Fund, oh my gosh, NAACP, like, dude. You know what I mean, oh, man. Let me just tell you, things like that. <laughs> Whew, like, like, hey, like, this is our boo boo. Here, here's that. No, you should be doing that the whole time. This is because I mean, your platform is based off your Spotify. Your platform is based off of music, right? So there's a lot. Of, not, what ninety percent, maybe eighty percent of your artists, or what? So you should be doing you in that period if that's the case. And what India already said, they make like 
three percent off their 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 music. Yeah, I could have she said like point zero zero, 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 which is zero, crazy three. because yeah. it's built off of their backs. I mean, these artists, and I'm talking about artists in general. I'm not talking about race. I'm talking about artists. artists yeah. Why do you have a podcast getting more than these artists? Because they are the ones that fund these podcasters. Or Joe Rogan, hundred million, and you don't give these artists. It makes sense though, right? Because if you're putting out a daily show or a weekly show, yeah, you're and you have enough viewers that is. Those are guaranteed repeat customers. So those are people that you can count on tuning in, which means that those are also people that you can, you know, you can devise your, 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 um, your advertisements and stuff too. So like it's in, when's the last time you pulled up, uh, Indy Ari song? Nope. But I've, I've bought things because of Joe Rogan. You know what I'm saying like, oh, really? and I well, love India. Athletic greens. Yeah. How about that? But oh, I'm wow. Saying. I tried it. I tried his, uh, uh, his alpha thing, whatever brain thing. I did. You did how'd you? How'd you like it? Did it work? I, I didn't like that. Oh, it didn't work for you. Uh, no, that was. Oh. So it, I get it. It didn't, it didn't agree with me. I get why 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 he's making the dough because it is guaranteed viewers. You know, every week. You I can't got necessarily you. say that for the music industry. How many times uh, you listen to the same album or the same artist? Well, weekly? on the streamly, on the, there's playlists that they're just being played out, played, played, played. Just like Joe Rogan, you're 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 going through his his, his library and you're playing it. His is a little bit different though, because you get something like you get a whole different world with him, whole different world. You go you'll go from learning about uh, COVID to then learning about. Uh, uh, what happened with uh, Charles Manson and the CIA yeah. to learning about um, um, a, a fighter as far as uh, uh, MM, um, MM, uh, UFC to learning about um, um, uh, it's it's engaging it, it's and whatever it's, and it's a format that you learn from you may mm-hmm. listen to Michael Jackson today mm-hmm. maybe tomorrow you listen to JT when are you going to play them again are you guaranteed to play them again next week or the week after that and that's why I got you. the music game yeah. is a little I different under, from 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 the I understand but I'm just saying 100 million but I mean I'm just saying these artists anyway. I'm saying these artists should be paid a little bit more than Boy, zero, 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 zero point whatever they're coming back you know because the music industry they've been hurt by the music industry and these streamings and and Napster just killed their whole life and I miss Napster oh who is Napster <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> well, uh, well, the debate on Joe is still up. Um, me, I, where do you I, fall on? Joe? I could care. You know, you're not a Joe fan, right? I remember when I first brought him up, you were like, you I know, like what Joe he Hulk. does, but it's like the Joe Rogan. Yeah, I like what he does. I've learned more about him, and and you know, obviously, he's influenced our podcast, right? Did you did you did you listen to us? Did you listen to his podcast? Did you listen to it though? Did I listen to it? Yeah. No, I've, on YouTube, I would see. The, the things that came on, I would watch it more so on YouTube and stuff like that, but not in full context. I couldn't do sit there for three hours and okay, you know. But I would listen the the sound bites that they would have on a certain topic. Or if it's a ten minute part of that conversation, yes, good. That's my attention span. You know, sorry guys, ADHD. What about you? I haven't tuned into Joe um, faithfully. Same thing. Okay. I've yeah. caught tidbits, and, yeah. and that's why when it's I, someone you you like or you want to. Or if hear, it's you know? a topic that yeah. I want to hear, and, yeah. and that's why I'm trying to walk this fine line of. Being understanding of the origins of where this is this this shit storm is stemming from because yeah. it's not because anybody really cares what Joe no. said years ago. It's about trying to get him under control. But I can't turn, like I said, a deaf ear to the things that have come out of his mouth either. So I'm yeah. kind of perplexed on the matter. It's, you know, in one breath I celebrate him, and in the next breath I'm like, Urgh. so you know, I'm just. So it's I'm like kind of um, on the matter. Yeah, for me, like I said, it's almost like man. Like you said, where did it stem from? Where did it come from? And at the end of the day, um, has he learned from his mistakes, which he's apologized? And and do we move on from there? I mean, people make mistakes, right? You can um, only you can only take somebody for what they say and yeah. their actions. So he's he's apologized, but uh, you you can only watch him from their own and see. Yeah, what he does. but I told exactly. you before we discussed this. I don't agree with this whole cancel culture because it puts people in a, in a, in a it, it, you're creating something that is going to take a life on its own and it's going to come back to bite yeah. the people that have supported it because we've all messed up at some point in our lives and people can use things that are taken out of context Yeah, whatever. and your yeah. actions against you and let's face it, who we were 10 years ago, five years ago, we're not the same person we are today at this point in, in, in our life. So we can't compare 
us 20 years ago from our belief system, unless you live in a basement, you're still in your parents' house, then yeah, you haven't grown. But if you've had life experiences that has changed and altered the way you see people, your perspective, whether it be race. Even, um, even Sleepy Joe? Sleepy even, Joe? Even, even, even Sleepy nah, Joe? Nah, nah, Sleepy Joe, is, yo, he was old. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yo, when you're old, you can't cheese a, a dog <laughs> with your tricks, man. Uh, I'm just, but to I'm me. I'm just saying, you said people change, right? Not Sleepy Joe, man. <laughs> Joe, Sleepy, Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe is the exception. He is the exception. Joe. Joe <laughs> yo. Don't be charging me no Hennessy rates. <laughs> Fucking Joe. All right. Well, you guys have a great w- week. Yes. I'm Reg. I'm Ray. I forgot who I was. Oh, Cousin Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> we out. Yeah. I'm back. Woo.